Hi, my name's Larry, and today we're going to look at doing the 32-bit mode for HDR images in Photoshop. Now, what is HDR? A lot of people think of that as being the really brightly colored, oversaturated, you know, over-processed images like uh, classic cars and a lot of things like that. And even a lot of landscapes and cityscapes are done that way. And uh, that's a, a style, and a lot of people like that. I, I like some of that stuff myself. I just I was searching for my photos as how to make them a little more realistic, in fact, a lot more realistic, and was looking at all the different ways that you could work with bracketed images. Now, if you're not familiar with bracketing, it's basically taking multiple exposures to capture as much of the dynamic range of the scene as possible. A uh, single shot a lot of times can't get you everything without the lights uh, blowing out in the clouds or the shadows being so dark there's no detail. But your eye is seeing it, but the camera is not. So by taking a series of images of different exposures and combining them back together uh, later on in various software or techniques, then you get to have a situation uh, where you can control that and get just the look that you want. That is done for me now in HDR Effects um, Pro is one way I do it, and the other one is in Photoshop uh, using the 32-bit mode. Now my image, let me just go over here that I did of Cathedral Rock, see if that's up here. This image right here was done in HDRFX Pro. And I was able to back it down enough to give it a, a real natural look, but definitely the, this was a much darker scene. The storm was just blowing out. Uh, a lot of areas would not have uh, been as visible as this came out uh, there. And uh, Google ended up uh, asking if they could use it to show off the Nick software HDRFX Pro. So this is the banner on their website currently. So uh, let's see, it's April 24th in 2016. It's been up there a number of years now. So I don't know, I don't think they're going to be changing it. Uh, it is a, a really nice photo. I really enjoy this location in Sedona, Arizona. So let's go on back over here to Lightroom, and you'll notice here we are in Morrison Silos They're outside of Gilbert, Arizona. And at this point of the day, very early morning, like 5 o'clock, the sun in uh, January this year, uh, you could k take a picture and the light reflecting off of things. You could see everything. We really didn't need bracketing at this point. But as the sun began to rise, and you get this, you begin to get a much stronger dyna dynamic range. You notice we're starting to lose the foreground and having a more difficult time not to blow out the clouds and things. A little bit earlier, we're still okay uh, getting everything in here at this level and catching a lot of detail in the little stars. We're still starting to blow out on these little lights here. So let me switch out of here and go back over to some images I've selected from that morning. So here's the standard shot that you might take right out of the camera, standard exposure, and it's, it's pretty good. You could do something with this, uh, but you also could end up uh, you know, with no detail back here in the back end <clears throat> as the sun was rising up more and more. So what we're going to take a look at here is go back over to the library and this exposure was for five seconds. The next exposure was for 1.3 seconds, a little darker. That gets our sky pulled back together, a little detail in the distance. And here is the overexposed version for 20 seconds. Now all this was set up in the camera to automatically uh, do this for me and take the three shots by just clicking the shutter once. Most cameras, modern cameras today, have this ability and set up an HDR or bracketed sequence. And I chose to just do three. That usually works just fine for me. But sometimes people do five, six, or seven, you know, usually an odd number. And uh, you have a couple below and even, and then a couple above. That would be a, a, a five. But I don't usually need that much information to get what I want. So instead of going out into any other you know, dedicated software, I'm going to use Photoshop uh, in, in itself that we get with this package here, the photo deal. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to right click or control click on Mac and say edit in and go down here to merge to HDR Pro in Photoshop. Our goal is to get a little more natural looking uh, image that we can process um, with any any way we want after that. You could use all kinds of different software um, from Topaz to Nick software to On1. Um, there's just so many different things. You may have some actions in Lightroom. 
I mean, uh, presets and actions in Photoshop that you like that can do that. So here it is. It's processed the three images in layers. It basically brought them up as layers. And now it's brought us up into this um, dialog box. And if you look up in the upper right, I've selected 32-bit. If yours is saying 16, just switch it to 32. If we go to 16, there's the look we have. A little bit too bright. 8-bit, no change. But 32-bit, a little darker. And that's what I like. You could click remove ghosting if you were to go over here to the bottom left. You can zoom in to different levels and see if there's anything that needs solving. But I know this picture is going to look just fine. You can see already we've got detail back here. The sky has a little different look. So we've been combining some uh, movement in the clouds. Okay, now that we have things set here the way we want, we've got 32-bit mode. Everything's looking the way we want. We go over here to the bottom right. We click tone in ACR, which is Adobe Camera Raw. Now it's got to process this file, and we're going to see if I can get it to open. I've been having a little trouble with the latest version automatically opening up in Camera Raw. So we'll see. We may have to do one little trick first. So here it is, and see, it says it can't do it, so there's the issue. All right, so we are in mode 32-bit. So this is one of the key parts, because you'll know before I change it that a lot of things are grayed out here in the... The, I can't get out to most of my plugins like Topaz and things, and there's various things that you can't get to uh, uh, up in here. So everything's, or at least a great majority of things, are grayed out. So that's because of the 32-bit. Not everything works in that. So I go back here, and I go back to 16-bit, which is where we normally are when we're working in Photoshop, occasionally 8-bit, but 16-bit, and we're going to say Merge, and over here, there's, we could do that one. That's not bad looking, but a lot of times I find in my HDRs or my bracketed images that I go, I need to go to exposure and gamma. And it takes me back to the look I had when it was first blended together. So that works in most cases. You may find occasionally you can go to some of these other ones that, that work for you, like local adaption. But I'm going to go back to what I normally do and say, okay, this is now a 16-bit file. I could go up here. I a lot of times like to convert to smart filters. Enable it. Let that process. You'll notice a little icon in the bottom right corner now over here. We should be able to just go up here to Camera Raw and bring it up. And yes, we can. So there was some issue I've been having here. I have to do some research into it. Uh, why I'm not able to automatically jump here in with 32-bit mode directly into Camera Raw, which is what it's trying to do, and it should do it on its own, but obviously it didn't, so there was the solution. And I can go and do my normal raw exposure um, adjustments here. I don't do those on the bracketed images because I could get all kinds of crazy things going on. I've got my bracket, my different exposure. Let's get that into one image and then go in here and do this. Now, let me see. Yeah, it doesn't do the same thing here. In, in uh, Lightroom, if you didn't know, you can hold the Shift key and double-click on these, and they'll uh, do some automatic exposures. But I'm just going to go ahead and open these blacks up just a hair. If you hold down the Option key, you can actually see what's going on. Like there, you have no detail where that starts to show. I'm going to bring it up make sure there's that, and open this up a little. You can see we start to lose detail in the sky and the background, so I'm just kind of holding that Option key while I move these things. There's no detail where that red is, but I pull the highlights down as to hair, and you can see we're getting some, I can actually move it. Look at this. You can see that. Hopefully you can see that on the video that I'm getting detail back into the sky. I'm going to really pull that highlights down. Um, the shadows, I think I'm happy with them. I could open them more. You see you could lighten things there, but I'm going to go and leave that where it was. And you can play with everything there. I'm happy with that. I might add a tad of clarity. I don't want to put too much in too early because I'm going to use some other filters and process this like Nick Software or Topaz or something. And I may uh, start introducing and bring out a lot of things I don't want to get like noise. Uh, really make things look over processed. So I'm going to go say OK. We now have what I want here. Now what I can do is go into something. And in fact what I need to do here is I want to you know, rasterize this layer so that it is no longer a smart object. I'm going to duplicate that layer. I'm going to go out here to sharpen and nope, I want to go down here. Topaz Labs, there we go. Get your eyes to look at the right part of the screen. And we come up here. I've already got landscape selected in here right now. So it's creating the previews at the bottom. You can see it doing that is part of how it does it. And once it's created them all, it'll show me my image, 
you know, just about there, there we go. You can hover here and look at the different effects that these things are going to do, like sunny day, midday, landscape pop, there's three of them. I'm going to go on up here and look at beach shore. There's uh, clouds, Ooh, brings a lot of the interesting detail in there. And I'm going to go with clouds too here, let it process, take a look at that. You can always click the reset button in the bottom corner, but look at that change. There's before, see, there's before, after, just with that one filter. Look at all the detail I have in, in the image now. I'm going to go ahead and say, okay, we'll take this back into Photoshop, and we can continue on our editing process. You can see, doing the bracketed images, that I've got uh, quite a bit of detail. I've got this image ready where I can take it into something like Topaz Clarity and really get something out of it. Again, we have before and after and you get rid of that haze in there look at that clarity going on here zoom in here very nice no blown out parts of the lights clouds back there we've got detail in it we've got beautiful kind of a blur cloud effect because of the uh, different images being put together a little glow on the side of these so this worked really really well like image is nice and sharp all the way here. I was, hyperfocal distance was just right for this shot where the, everything from the foreground to the background is in focus all the way. So uh, this is very nice. Go back to the full view. So there you go. 32-bit processing. I could then flatten this layer down. I could save it, go back in. I could do some more processing here, sharpening, whatever I want to do, um, and uh, then go back to Lightroom and do my final adjustments and export out my final image. So there you go. That is exposure bracketing using the 32-bit system, dropping back into 16-bit after you use the, the gamma uh, level uh, thing. When you drop down, it's going to ask you in the dialog box what to do. The gamma exposure one is the, the best one I find in most cases. And then you can go on and use all your filters that are available again, and you can do your normal processing however you go about it. Again, thanks for watching, and we'll talk to you soon.